Good evening everyone. It is a really warm, uh, wet evening here in North Georgia and I'm on my way up to the Ridge and Valley region of the state to do some more road cruising for Eastern Tiger Salamanders. Um, it's pretty much mid-February now so it's getting a bit late in the year to um, find tigers. Typically they start slowing down around peak season for spotted salamanders and that is right now. But I'm hoping to see some late ones, maybe some females moving back from the pond, and hopefully some males and a good mix of individuals. Last time I was here, I only found three live tigers on the road. Uh, there was also a dead one, and one got away. So yeah, the tiger salamanders up here in the ridge and valley region of the southeastern United States are some of the prettiest ones you'll see anywhere in their range. Uh, really unique lineage, and all of them just look incredible so yeah I know I've made a couple of tiger videos lately but I love them personally and I'm finding all I can. I am flipping out right now I feel like I just got my life for Jefferson salamander but I'm in Georgia right now and I know better than that. This is a patternless eastern tiger salamander. It's basically a solid gray coloration and there are no yellow spots here and how I can tell this is a patternless tiger salamander and not a patternless spotted salamander, which is much more common, is the more triangular head right here, as well as the different tail. It's more flattened and paddle-like. And also, tiger salamanders have much longer and larger toes. Um, so even though this is a relatively small salamander here, everything about its feature says tiger salamander, but it has no spots. This is insane. Um, Again, not really uncommon to get aberrant spotted salamanders like this. You still don't see too many of them, but I have never seen or heard of an eastern tiger salamander like this without spots. I mean, it's just crazy looking. Just look at that head. Look at the big long toes. And look at that tail. That says tiger all day. I'm going to get some good photographs of this individual right here. I think it's actually a small female and um, get back on the road and get to cruising. But if I don't find anything else, my night is made right here. This is just insane. This does not even look like a tiger salamander. I mean, look at that. Right here is one more look at this patternless, aberrant eastern tiger salamander here off of the road. I'm at the edge of this field here that she was crossing out of. I mean, just look at this animal so unique um, no pattern on the tail and typically tiger salamanders are kind of more of a black coloration outside of the yellow spots but this one is gray at first i thought it was a weird patternless spotted salamander because sometimes you see those but again the features of this individual say tiger so this is something i have never seen and i've never seen pictures of it either i'm sure it happens but um, i think this is pretty rare so yeah, luckily, this girl here is being really cooperative, so I'm just going to get some photos and help her across the road. And it's important she gets to her breeding pond because if she successfully breeds this year, then there may be a future generation of some patternless tigers here. So, really cool to see. I'm still in shock, quite frankly, but uh, my night is made if I don't get anything else. So, we're going to shoot some more photos and keep on after Good morning everyone. It has been a couple of weeks since you guys last seen me and uh, unfortunately during that time I lost quite a bit of footage due to some storage issues. But uh, anyway, the last salamander I found uh, the night in my last clip was that weird, apparent, patternless tiger salamander. So luckily I still have the clips a bit. I actually found a more normal looking tiger that night and I lost that footage. So it sucks. But anyway, Resolve those issues, and I am currently driving down to central Georgia today to do some hiking for some snakes. As you can see out here, it is really foggy, uh, and that is because yesterday was really cool and wet, and today it is heating up rapidly. It's going to be a high of about 80 degrees, so it should be a really productive day of looking for snakes. I'm excited to um, see some new stuff after a long, pretty cold winter here in Georgia. 
So uh, main targets today will be eastern king snakes and king break rattlesnakes, but I will take anything I can get. So anyway, I'm going to finish the remainder of this drive, and I will see you guys when I get there. And the first salamander of the day is this nice little Okmulgee slimy salamander here. Um, I believe these are Plethodon Okmulgee. They occur down here around the fall line in central Georgia. Um, I've found a lot of other slimy species, but I believe this is my first Okmulgee slimy, so pretty cool. Doesn't look a whole lot different from the uh, northern slimies and a lot of the other members of the slimy salamander complex, but it's always cool to see the uh, local species of these guys in different habitats. Uh, I'm kind of in some nice upland habitat here, so pretty cool to see. I'm just going to put this little guy back under its log and we'll see if we can find some snakes. And the next salamander of the day is um, the southern red salamander here. I've found a lot of red salamanders before. I have found blue ridge red salamanders, northern red salamanders, and black chinned as well, but this is my lifer southern red salamander. Um, these guys have a pretty patchy distribution. They live in clear, sandy little um, streams and springs down here below the fall line, whereas the other red salamander subspecies occur in the Piedmont and the mountainous regions further north. So um, this is the least prettiest of all the red salamander subspecies, but still my first one, so really cool to see. Um, pretty much like all the other red salamanders, but again, these kinds of habitats are fewer and further between down here in the coastal plains. So they get a little bit harder to find. But anyway, I'm gonna get some good photos of this individual because it's posing nicely and Keep on hiking and we will see if we can find some snakes. Yeah, first snake in hand of the day is this nice eastern rat snake here. First one I've seen out in 2021. Um, really nice, not the biggest rat, but uh, pretty good size, good average sized adult. But uh, I'm just gonna get some quick photos of this individual and put it back. Obviously snakes are coming out now, so it's looking like it's gonna be a pretty good day. Nice eastern rat snake. Next rat snake of the day is this really crusty looking individual here. I don't think I'm going to mess with him. Um, as you can see, he has some possible scale rot here and Looks like he has some issue going on with his right eye. Really dark rat snake as well to be down here in the coastal plain. I'm typically, they're a bit lighter, but uh, this is a pretty dark one. Um, basically a black rat snake in my opinion. So anyway, I'm just gonna let this guy chill here and uh, keep on hiking. And maybe we will see some more diversity. All right, next rat snake of the day is this individual here just out on the crawl. Um, Slightly smaller and a bit skinnier than the last few, as you can see, but appears to be clean and in pretty good shape. Um, still really cold feeling, so uh, I think it's pretty early in the day. We got a chance of some diversity later on, but um, I'm just going to leave this guy on the crawl here and keep on hiking. And we'll see if we can find a canebrake rattlesnake or maybe a cottonmouth or eastern king if we're lucky. And the next snake of the day is this nice adult black racer here. Has a little bit of scale issues on the neck, but honestly a pretty clean individual and really nice for a racer. Um, we'll be seeing plenty of these as snake season progresses. And uh, I probably won't spend much time on them in the future, but really common snakes um, often eat other snakes in places like these. But this guy was just coming out here to bask. The sun is now out. Has a nice little spot under this log here. So yeah, second species of the day, uh, Black Racer. I'm gonna keep on hiking this ridge top here and we'll see if we can get us a cane break rattlesnake. And the next herp of the day is not a snake, but what appears to be a yellow-bellied slider here out basking. This is good to see that there's at least one yellow-bellied in here because the invasive red-eared sliders are taking over in a lot of places and uh, kind of about competing them. So always nice to see these guys as common as they are. But uh, I'm just going to keep on hiking and see if we can find some snakes because the sun is really shining now and it's looking a lot better. 
And right here we have one more rat snake. This is a much smaller one here in a tree catching some sun. It's really warm now, hopefully not too warm. The sun came out really quickly. So uh, I'm just gonna leave this guy right here, hit some uplands and we'll see if we can find some more diversity. And right here we have rat snake number seven for the day. Apparently it, this is a rat snake kind of day because other than that black racer, there hasn't been anything else out, but this one's posed really nicely here, catching some sun. I might actually take a minute here to get some good photographs. Um, really healthy looking individual too, nice and thick. Probably pretty long when it's all the way out of the stump. So yeah, another really nice dark rat snake. I'm just gonna leave it in C2 here, take some quick pho photos and keep on hiking this ridge top. I'm really gonna try to pull off a cane break rattlesnake here soon. So we'll see if we can do it. All right, everyone, first vipers of 2020 are these two eastern copperheads here. I still go by northern and southern personally because I'm kind of, I guess, an old school herper. But uh, we'll just call these easterns because they're right here on the fall line. This one just slithered back and is rattling its tail. Um, this one's still here in C2. So, uh, yeah, really nice to see these first copperheads of 2021. Right here is a closer look at this copperhead moving through this brush pile here. It really puts into perspective how well these guys can be camouflaged. You really got to watch where you're stepping in habitat like this. Um, they love areas of deep leaf litter. And there it goes. So I am currently sitting here in a Atlanta traffic jam. Um, that's what happens when you decide to drive back to Atlanta around 4 or 5 p.m. Um, pretty typical really but uh, anyway I did not see any other snakes today um, none of the big targets today but still a really good number of snakes for late February it was fun just to get out and see some reptiles because it's been a little while for me um, I have been seeing some small fossorial snakes and things at work on warmer days but um, no big colubrids so yeah uh, that was really fun um, good to see those copperheads as well and uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to talk that patternless tiger salamander in this video. So I think it's a good time to call this video here. The good news is I will be heading out in the morning to do some hiking and tent flipping in the North Georgia Piedmont. And hopefully that'll be a pretty productive day. But that will be in the next video. So yeah, like, comment, and subscribe if you want to. Do all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.